Are you a sole trader and wondering how to pay yourself? Then this is the video for you. As a business accountant, my team and I spend all day long helping owners navigate through the journey of self-employment. And one of the key questions we get asked often is, okay, so I've worked hard, I've got this money in my account, hopefully, and uh, how do I pay myself? And actually, as a sole trader, it's very, very straightforward. Now, before I answer that, Make sure if you like this video and you want to hear more of these types of topics, click the subscribe button below and you'll be notified the minute another video comes out. So the first thing to understand as a sole trader or a self-employed person is that the money that you have in your account is actually yours in the majority of occasions. You and the business are one and the same. And as a result, actually paying yourself physically is very, very straightforward and consists of you drawing that money from the bank account into what's hopefully a personal account. And the reason I mention that is that best practice is to have a separate business account that all your expenses and all your income Come, come in and out of. And the reason that that's a benefit to you is twofold. One, well, there's actually probably three reasons. One, the bank have terms and conditions that generally they don't want you operating out of a, operating a business out of a personal account. And the reason for that is that they get more fees, especially with if you pay cash in particularly, you'll see there's different tariffs with the bank. And if you pay cash in, you'll see that the charges are reasonably high on some of these accounts. So that's one reason is, is that the banks don't like it. Uh, the other reason is that if HMRC ever look at it, you can just turn the bank account over to them and say, well, look, it's, it's all there. But more importantly for me as a business accountant, the thing that it really helps is to keep all your expenditure in one place. And that's really important when it comes to doing your tax returns so you can keep your tax bill as low as legally possible by making sure you don't miss any expenses in that claim and in that tax return. So in order to actually pay yourself, you're just gonna withdraw it from your business account and pay it into your personal account and that's it. And that quite often in accounts terms and how us accountants would refer to that would be owner's drawings. That's, that's the word we use. You might call it your wages or your salary, but in tax terms, it's just drawings. And that's something that's quite key to understand because in, in your job, if you've been employed, you would have had payroll run on you and you'd have had that sort of tax applied and national insurance applied at source and it all been sorted for you. In this particular case, you do have some tax to pay and that's a whole other video with us talking about how that works, but you will have some tax and national insurance to pay at a later date. But right now, you can just draw that money. And obviously, you don't want to drain the whole of your business account because you're going to need what is known as working capital, which is really money to operate the business, pay your other direct debits and all that kind of stuff, buy materials up front, fuel your van, you know, all those things. So you're going to want to take that into account. But from an overall tax saving point of view, without getting too deep into that in this video, one of the things that sort of stood the test of time really is to say that if you left around 25% of your earnings in that bank account uh, in sort of as a provision for a later tax bill, you wouldn't go too far wrong all the time. You're earning under about 50 grand a year. So bear that in mind, you know, 25% is not too bad. It was a rule that was told to me when I first become self-employed and I think it's worked in, in my experience and with my team's experience working with self-employed people, that has really been quite a good ballpark figure that works quite well. And a lot of the time, as you get into your journey, it's, it's more money than you need and then you can go on a holiday or something with it. So with that in mind, leaving a bit of money in the account and leaving some money in there just to operate the business is a really, really good thing. Outside of that, then yeah, you can make a decision of how much you want to draw each month. And I know for a lot of self-employed people early on, that can be an interesting dilemma. You know, how much do I draw? And people are a bit scared of it. So, but you will work that out yourself. And of course, if you've got an accountant, you can always chat to them about what they think that, that number could look like. One thing that's really important to remember is almost a tax tip, I suppose, or just something that's going to stop you from getting in trouble is one thing we see quite often every couple of years is somebody who's put their drawings, the amount they're drawing every month. So let's say you draw two and a half grand a month. They've added that up for the year and they've put that in the box that says wages. Now what that does is it actually gives you a tax deduction on your tax return and that's wrong because it's your money, your wages and there's no tax deduction on that. So please don't do that. That that wages box is for people you may employ in your business. And that's really it, short and sweet. All the main points there. So just make sure that you're leaving yourself enough money to run the business and you're leaving yourself enough money for tax. And then after that, it's up to you to decide what you want to draw and literally draw it into your personal account. It is that simple. If you've enjoyed this video and got value from it, please do share it with your networks and please do ask any questions in the the comments below. We'll see you on the next one.